Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. Here we're going to cover the topic of multiplying polynomials by monomials. Now, if you haven't figured it out uh, so far, algebra is a sequence of skills. And as you go farther in the lessons, you're really going to be required to use the skills that you've already learned. So this is a great example of that. We're, we've already learned how to multiply monomials together. Um, here we're just extending it one more level so that we're multiplying something, for instance, like 4. This is the simplest type of problem, times x minus 3. Now you actually know how to do this because you know the distributive property, but you can also think of this as a polynomial, a binomial in this case. And then this first guy is a, it's a constant, it's a number, but it's a very, very simple uh, monomial, just one term. So it's going to be the same whether or not this is a simple number or something else out here. You're going to take it and you're going to distribute it into each term. So in the simplest case, what you're going to have is 4 times x here, and that will give you 4x, 4 times x. And then here, 4 times negative 3 is going to give you negative 12. So you have 4x minus 12. That's the simplest type of problem you can come up with where you're taking a polynomial and multi multiplying it by a monomial. So let's do a couple problems like that and we'll just kind of ratchet up the complexity. Now what if you had c times c minus 2? So again you have a polynomial, a binomial in this case, times a monomial on the outside. And all you do is you take the c and distribute it to each guy here. So c times c is c squared, right? Because c times c you add the exponent. So you have a 1 here and a 1 here. You add them so you're going to get c to the power of 2. And then you're going to have minus from the minus sign on the inside, and then c times 2 is just 2c. That's about as far as you can take it, and that's the answer there. Uh, now the next one looks more like a typical algebra problem that you might actually see. So for instance, on the outside, 3 times y on the outside, on the inside, y plus 5. This looks more like what we're talking about in the title, because we have a polynomial, in this case just a simple binomial, two terms inside. We're multiplying by a single term. It's called a monomial here. So it gets distributed in. The 3y gets distributed in just like if it was a number on the outside. So 3y times y. Now that you know you multiply y times y, you add the exponents, you get y squared. So it's going to be 3 times y squared because basically you have an implied 1 right here. So 3 times 1 gives you the 3. y times y gives you the y squared. You have a plus sign, so you carry that along for the ride. And then finally, 3y times 5. What do you do? You multiply the numbers, giving you 15, and the y comes along for the ride. So you had a y here times this. You multiply the numbers. The y still has to be present here because you're still multiplying uh, by y. So you get 3y squared plus 15, and that's the final answer. All right. Now, look at this problem. This one's a little bit different. What if you had 2y on the outside? And on the inside, the polynomial you had was 3 times y squared minus y minus 5. So now things are getting a little more complicated because this is your polynomial. See, we're multiplying polynomials by monomials. This is your polynomial. In this case, it's a trinomial, which means it has three terms. And on the outside, you're multiplying by a monomial, which just means one term. But the same thing happens in all of these cases. You're just going to take this and distribute it, multiply it in times that, and then times that, and then times that. So 2y times 3y squared, you multiply the numbers. 2 times 3 is 6. y times y squared is y to the power of 3 because you add the exponents. You have an implied 1 up here, and it's the same base. So you add it. 1 plus 2 is 3. You have a minus here, so you just carry that along for the ride. And then 2y times y, the 2 comes on because it's effectively 2 times 1. There's a 1 here. And then y times y gives you y squared. Add the exponents. Now again, you have another minus sign, so that comes along for the ride. You just copy the, essentially the signs uh, on the inside. Um, and then 2y times 5. 2y times 5. 2 times 5 is 10. And then the y just comes along for the ride. So it's 6y cubed minus 2y squared minus 10y. And that is the final answer. So from here on out, the problems that we're going to do are going to look a little more complicated, sort of like this one did. But you're doing the same thing in all cases. You're distributing this in to every term. You do have to be careful about the signs. You have to make sure. See, here you have a positive thing times a negative thing. So that's why this is negative. Positive times negative, you have a negative here. All right, so let's go ahead and draw a little divider bar and write something a little more complicated down. What if I had negative 2 times a times b? 
And on the inside, I had a squared b minus 3ab squared plus 5b cubed. So now, here is my polynomial, three terms, trinomial, one, two, three, and the monomial on the outside. So we're going to distribute this and multiply it into that term, and then everything gets multiplied to that term, and everything gets multiplied to this term. But you have to be careful because you have a negative quantity on the outside. So every time you distribute in, you have to consider the negative sign times whatever you have in here. All right, so we're going to begin by distributing this into the first term. And before I actually do the math, I want to make sure and write everything down. So this times this, and I'm going to write that down as negative 2ab times a squared b. That's just the multiplication of these first two terms. And then I'm going to take this and multiply it into the second term. But you have to consider um, that... Uh, well, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, that this is going to basically be, this is a negative term here also. So you can write it a couple of different ways, but I'm going to write it as plus negative 2ab times negative 3ab. All right, ab squared actually. So let's write it like this, negative 3ab squared, like this. So I write it as a I write it as a plus sign because I'm going to let the signs take care of it. It says negative times negative. So I have a negative times negative. And then I'm going to have a plus here. And then it's going to be negative 2ab times 5b cubed. Now I can go term by term and start doing the multiplication. So what I have here is negative 2. This is just times 1. So this is going to be negative 2 here. And then I have a times a squared, I can add those exponents, giving me a cubed, and then b times b gives me b squared, adding those exponents. Now, when I get here, I have negative times negative giving me positive, so this is going to stay positive, and then 2 times 3 is 6, right? And then a times a, I can add those exponents, giving me a squared, and then b times b squared is b cubed. So it'll be 6a squared b cubed, and then finally, I look over here, I'm, I had it with a plus sign here, but really it's negative times positive. So this is going to be a negative answer. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, so negative 10. And then I have a times, well, there is no a over there, so the a just comes along. And then I have b times b cubed, so b to the fourth, because I add those guys. So it's negative 2 a cubed b squared plus 6 a squared b cubed minus 10 a times b to the fourth power. All right, make sure you follow that. Make sure you can get all of that correct yourself. And then we'll do one final problem. I want to give myself a lot of extra room for this one. It's not too hard, but it just looks confusing at first. Um, the problem is p times q squared. And on the inside, we have p squared minus 3pq minus 4q squared, like this. So here we have a trinomial, polynomial and a monomial, just one term on the outside there. So again, we're going to take this monomial and distribute it in, uh, but without trying to do too many things at once, let's just write down the multiplications, taking care to keep the signs in place. This time, we'll just honor the signs of the inside, uh, which is kind of an easier way, I think, to keep track of it. So what we'll have is pq squared multiplied by this first term, p squared. So rather than trying to do that now, we'll just write the multiplication down. We have a minus sign from here, so we'll carry that through, and then we have distributing the, the quantity in here, pq squared times 3pq. So this getting multiplied in here, the minus sign comes along for the ride. This term times this term, I'm just writing it all down to kind of group it all together. And then finally, we have another minus sign, which comes directly from here, and then we have this getting multiplied in times that. So we'll have pq squared times 4 q squared. So you see now, instead of trying to do it all at once, we have everything written down, and now we can just focus on each individual term. So here we have p times p squared, so we can add those exponents. So that will be p cubed times q squared. The minus sign comes along for the ride. And now we have the 3, so that's going to be in the front. And we have p times p, giving me p squared. And we have q squared times q, we add those together, giving me q to the third power. Now this minus sign comes along for the ride, and we have a 4, so it'll be minus 4. And we have p 
times, well, there is no P there, so the P will just come along for the ride. And then we have Q squared times Q squared, so we, so we add those exponents, so it's Q to the fourth uh, power. So let me double check that I wrote everything down correctly. P uh, cubed, Q squared, minus 3, P squared, Q cubed, minus 4, P Q to the fourth power. That's correct. I know it looks complicated, but this is why we build our skills in algebra one step at a time. We learn how to do distributive property for a while. Then we learn how to multiply and add exponents, and, and we learn how to simplify terms and all these things separately. Now we're starting to put everything together. So if this stuff looks confusing to you, like if you didn't know that you can add the exponents here for q squared and q squared, if you didn't know that that gives you q to the fourth, that means that your skills are lacking from before. So you have to rewind and go back and master all of these earlier topics. So make sure you can do that. Follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to continue multiplying polynomials by monomials and just giving you more practice with this topic.